Hi guys and welcome to Studio Layout Lines. Today I thought I would take you into my studio this morning on a very dark morning and take you behind the scenes, behind the process of my Iceland inspired print range. I moved to Iceland almost four years ago now and since then I have been working for myself. I've been juggling lots of private commissions and design jobs alongside running Layout Lines which is my website and because we're coming up to Christmas so people are starting to think about shopping for Christmas presents and hopefully shopping small or supporting independent uh, designers like myself, I thought today would be a good day to show you behind the scenes. So this is what my office space looks like. We've got a map of the world which is one of those scratch off maps that I've actually not scratched anything off because I have got a little bit too attached to the gold. But I might attempt to do a video and tell you about all the adventures I have been on so far. Starting up here we've got a plant on the right hand side then we have a Ikea lamp that hangs right down. This used to be our dining space that's why it's so low that light. Then we've got the fairy light, it's got a letterboard sign on the left there that says shop layout lines has hired a new assistant which doesn't mean Ingmar that means Mia <laughs> then we've got a little bit of a gold glittery decoration a lovely plant and then a nice messy but productive desk printer they are laptop iPad phone coffee always gotta have your coffee camera equipment a bunch of sketchbooks that are in use right now a folder of drawings that I'm gonna talk about today we've got the decorations that I was talking about the other day and then there's a little Christmas tree in the background there I have a few orders here that need to go out today. This is basically all of the items for packaging and posting, all of the stickers and shipping labels and thank you notes and the, my stamp and everything into all of the different envelope freebies that I sometimes pop in for kind of special orders or whatever. And then this entire cupboard is full of shop layout lines things. So everything from actual packaging to all of the prints. Yeah, a little bit too much. But I think that's a good sign because it shows that I'm too busy to actually organise things. So right now at Christmas time, that's fine with me. I can organise everything in the new year. So today I'm going to take you through behind the scenes of how I designed all of the items that are in my shop. When I moved to Iceland I had previously worked as an architect and then a senior lecturer teaching architectural design. So a lot of my work is based around sketches or drawings of buildings and typically I do a lot of architectural illustrations. And so when I moved to Iceland I took out my sketchbook, went downtown and just sketched all of the buildings around me. So I carry around these small sketchbooks because they fit in your pocket or in your handbag and they aren't too big so you don't feel the need to have to fill them up and I always have a pen in my handbag. Typically I would look at the iconic buildings, things like Halgrimskirka, the big church here, Harpa which is the concert hall. A lot of my initial drawings were not detailed at all so really really illustrative just outlines of buildings and quite a lot of the time I mostly did the sketches to share on Instagram and I really enjoyed sharing my work that way. And then people started to actually ask if I was selling these drawings and I did for a while, I sold the original sketches but then it was almost a shame that I no longer had that work, I could always sketch it again but I decided that I would do a print run and so that started the process of an Iceland collection in the shop. Airbnb then started up their experiences here in Iceland and we were doing Airbnb in the apartment at the time and I decided to mix the two so I now run a sketching walking tour of Reykjavik and also an Instagram walking tour so the two are quite popular and it's been a great way for me to just get to speak to some cool people sketch alongside them and encourage them in their photography or their sketching but also just keep revisiting these sites also take in the local architecture of the houses so residential architecture and that started me on a new area of work where I brought in colour which it didn't necessarily come very natural to me. I am an architect and I have typically been trained drawing with just 
black ink and so bringing colour into my work uh, was kind of almost like a nervous thing to me but I did it and now that I have a full range of houses in colour I absolutely love them and I think I possibly prefer them to the simple ink sketches now but also a lot of the buildings they're either buildings I've seen when I've been doing these walking tours or they're inspired by buildings that I saw when I was out and about with Mia when she was newborn and pushing her in the buggy and just having those mummy and Mia moments together so they're really special to me and then not risking too much of colour in my work I decided to attempt to paint a starry night sky with a bit of aurora northern lights dancing in it and this was just to get me back into painting and using my watercolours again and so I created this painting and it was something that I just kind of wanted to have in my studio or somewhere in the house that would be something to remind me to not be too scared of colour and to keep it quite natural but to have a bit of fun with it as well. It was actually in our spare bedroom which we used for our Airbnb rental so if anyone stayed here who's watching this video then you will remember this painting. I then moved on to playing around with some text. This was around about the same time that I was starting to think about how Mia and Ingmar would have this kind of secret language, Icelandic, so like a secret language from mummy and it was starting to worry me a little bit. How would we be bringing up this child who was going to be bilingual? How would it happen? How would it all work? And I was feeling a little bit pressure, self pressure on learning Icelandic and I decided that I would start going back through the alphabet and relearning the sounds and how to pronounce them and just kind of giving myself a refresher from the Icelandic course that I took possibly two years before this point. That inspired me to play around with the alphabet and the letters and incorporate some of my style and some of my artwork into them and so these came out. So I used the letters from the Icelandic alphabet that were really Icelandic to me and stood out and I created a little series of four mini artwork prints with the Northern Lights painting scanned in on the background. I really like the effect of them and it was something that I haven't done before, something really new, which then made me go on to even more colourful artwork and I created a whole load of postcards using words that were very Icelandic to me like Eyjafjallajökull and of course I had to add in an Aurora Northern Light and try to make it a bit of a kind of graphic representation of the Aurora dancing in the night sky. Going from working in just black and white to colour can be a really daunting experience for someone. That might sound dramatic but it is really scary when all you've really ever done is draw in just black and white. I think watercolour is one of the best materials to quickly start producing a little bit of colour or colour washes into your work because it can be so gentle and if you're someone who prefers to work in sketchbooks and physical artwork then I would definitely recommend using a bit of watercolour to start off with. But if you're digital and prefer to draw on your computer, iPad, I would definitely recommend just playing around with different layers and different opacities in Photoshop, Illustrator, Procreate, whatever it is that you're using. And in your studio, make sure to surround yourself by things that are colourful as well because the more you're surrounded by it, the more it will actually come into your work. A lot of this work was maybe first of all creating a sketchbook and then drawn up to a much bigger scale or on different pieces of paper collected all over this house, brought together at this desk and then either photographed, scanned in to get it onto the computer and then it was digitised. I think it's easier to work on things when they're larger and then reduce them down to the way that you actually want them to be. So a lot of my new work is A5 in size or A4, which is actually quite small for artwork. The houses that I've created, I really like them mini and they look so much more cute and they are cute houses and cute little cityscapes streetscapes and so I wanted that to be reflected in the print so it's a small print and the 
graphic prints are very bold. I think that they work really well as a four size in a much bigger mount on the wall. And then when you are at the stage where you think you're possibly near finished a collection and you've got them to the right size and all the colors are as accurate as you want them to be, you are ready to go off and print them, which can be, again, a daunting thing to do because it feels very final, even though it's not and you can still make changes. I looked around at different printers here in Iceland because I wanted it to be a made in Iceland collection. It was important to me that we weren't shipping it from China over here or whatever. It was all designed here, inspired by life here and produced, printed and sold from here. To wherever in the world. So I decided on a printer. We went there, Ingmar and I spoke with one of the designers there and he helped us out setting up the whole range. We negotiated a price for a large print run. We went away that day with rough draft of everything so we knew what kind of print quality we would be receiving, we knew the paper weight, we could agree on everything. I kind of had a night to sleep on it all before I said yes on everything and it was all printed and then Ingmar went and picked it up and brought it home. The first delivery of Layered Lawn prints in Iceland. It was so exciting. I can't actually tell. It was like a Christmas morning getting this box or a couple of boxes of prints of all of my work and going through them all and just kind of seeing them and holding them in your hands and it's just it's such an exciting feeling. The hours and hours and the sketches that you put into this whole collection from walks with Mia right the way through to Ingmar teaching me how to say I love you in Icelandic and I created this print. Yeah, the buildings that I have taken all these people on tours of, taken my, my family to and things. So it's really exciting and I really hope that you love the collection and that if you have been to any of these buildings or walked the streets and seen these cute little houses, you will hopefully want a little bit of the collection and we would love to package it up and send it off to you. So please make sure have a little look at the website, have a look through the shop and if you have any questions pop them in a comment down below. I hope you liked having a nosy around my little home studio. Please make sure to thumbs up this video if you've enjoyed it and if you are enjoying these videos and this channel then please do subscribe because it means a, a huge deal to me and um, the more that number goes up the better it is for us and the more encouraging it is we'll see you in vlogmas day four tomorrow see you then guys bye